Hey guys, Omni here. Welcome back for episode five of Netflix's Yu Yu Hakusho. This is the final episode of the season. Last episode was extremely intense, completely made up for my feelings on episode three. The Karasu Kurama fight alone, <sighs> chef's kiss was so freaking good. So let's go ahead and strap in, guys. If you want to see the following three action, check it out over on Patreon or if you got Marvel channel, get you access as well. It is a watch along format, so you will need your own footage to sync up with the time codes of my reaction the entire episode. Over there, we get the same thing for all the other shows and movies that we cover in the channel. You also get to suggest and vote what movies to react to each month. We got monthly Q&As, behind the scenes footage to try to make it worth your while since you're going to be supporting the channel. But guys, at the end of the day, really appreciate it. If you enjoy this reaction, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if you're not already because it really does help us out. With that all said and out of the way, Let's hop into episode five. Here we go. Um, did I miss something? Where, what, what is going on? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Tagoro's origins. I was like, did I miss something? Oh, got you in the jaw, boy. Oh. Dude, I'm so going to rewatch the anime after we're done with this. I just I've been itching so bad. I can't wait for the reanimation that they're doing for it. Whoa! Kuabara, sword up, man! Oh my god, he's so creepy, man. Oh, light up, light up, let it rip. Sorry, wrong anime. Yes. Damn it, YouTube won't let me show this, so like fuck. I, I this fight's gonna be rough. So sorry guys. Oh, it's got more oomph to it too. Right? Fucking tell him! E. Oh, I gotta say though, even though you could tell it's CGI, it still looks really good. Uh oh. Oh, it's all, it's a shit ton of those insects. Nice. Ooh, that was clean. One thing I do love about Yusuke compared to other anime protagonists and stuff like that is he literally, his power is the finger gun. It will not pierce. Oh no, he just stopped you. <laughs> Ooh. ようやく姿を見せてくれましたね。このままなお広げ続けたら妖怪たちが流れ込んでくるぞ。もっと広い世界を見たいんです。あなた方が人間界と魔界を分断する前のある道姿を見たいんです。つまらない国境なんて取っ
Exact words he said to Yusuke when he signed up to be a spirit detective. <laughs> I was hoping Yusuke would get his 1v1. Everybody else got theirs right now. Hit him with that CC, Karama! Ooh, fuck yeah. He mm. mm. <laughs> just keeps flopping them apart, but it can't stop him. You're done, boy. You're done. Yo! Ooh! Hey! Got you onto it this time. Pinch and release. I just realized we also never got a uh, spirit shotgun. All right, did he amp up his percentage? No, he's he's just walking through. I don't even know why he's paying attention to this, because honestly, he's got what he wanted at the end of the day. Like, they can leave and it won't affect his plans at all right now. That's why. Now they're all in the same place. Yeah, he really is, like, I'd say 95% of the time CGI. I've only, I only recall like one or two scenes where they actually used the actor physically. Ooh, yep, there it is. Yep, there he is. Yeah, this is the real one. ブドウを極めんとする仲間でした。年月が過ぎ、女は醜く年を取って生きました。逆に男はブドウのため、魔界の力を借りて妖怪となり、若さを保ち続けたのです。ところが、元は人間。私が Mm. <laughs> this guy's real good at being Elder Tagoro, man. Oh my <laughs> Wow Jesus I oh, you know you sold that too, buddy. The way you handled the Genkai situation. Your honor was well gone. Mm. 
決心に力を託した限界に価値はないだが託す相手を間違えたか I was actually just about to say, I was like, man, if Kuwabara was the main character of this, of this adaptation, that'd be interesting. Yusuke hasn't found that. Again, I can't think of a better word other than drive yet. That purpose, that understanding. The, the why him. Here it comes. Dig in. Ooh. <laughs> Get it. Ooh. <laughs> He found it. He found it finally. I mean, it's always been there. He just doesn't know it. Oh, yeah. Here comes the big boy form. Ooh. <laughs> Oh! Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Let's go. Pew, 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 pew. Dude, I love spamming that, that move in that game I was talking about, too. It was so much fun. It was pretty cheap, too, from what I remember. Chose to never lose again, but then became the same evil that put him on that path to begin with. Wow. Dude. for the save. Ooh. What we really need is Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine. They'll take him down. You just became Krillin, buddy. Mm. <laughs> oh, shit, he, he gone. Oh! Damn, that was nice. Orewa <laughs> 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 
There it is. There it is. He's finally figured it out. There you go. We need our healer. Can we get a heal? All right, well, that's it for now. Ikiwakareta あの、もしかして勘違いするな。俺は違う。うーん。あなたは仲間だ。あいつらのな。いや。あ、わお。よく分かったな。この道を選ぶと、公園前に伝えてくれ。恨めしるすけ。奴は<笑> <笑><笑><笑> Always playing the big brother. Mm. <laughs> Even if he doesn't want her to know. You did pretty damn good yourself too. Don't don't undersell yourself. Damn. This is a good fucking song, dude. Anything at the end? There's something. There is a something at the end. I'm gonna just jam to this for a minute. But I have to look this song up, man. Oh. I was wondering <laughs> what happened to him. Ooh, like hit the the detail of the eye moving behind his lids. Well, there we go. We made it. We made it through. I still feel like the Genkai stuff didn't land as hard as it could have. But again, I still managed to get a little emotional there when she showed up, especially with Tagoro when he turned around and saw the younger her, the one he knew, the one he grew up with. I don't know why that stuff always gets me. I still feel like a lot of that connection needed to be stronger that said the rest of this episode was really really good the fight was awesome the the way they kind of brought everything together was really really well done i, I just got to give the the stunt team so many props 
for this season because they made these fights epic as fuck. The digi doubles for the fights to give all of these sequences that anime speed, pizzazz, and look, and that kind of flourish to some of the action was really well done. Like, it's some of the best digi doubles in the middle of a fight scene that I've seen. It was really well executed. That fight between Karama and Krasu was the best thing in this entire season, and it was phenomenal. The music, the effects, the fights, and the stunt work in this was freaking great. And maybe, again, I, I, I talked about this a little bit, and I've been seeing this sentiment echoed elsewhere, that maybe the reason this is five episodes is to have that quality. I don't know what the budget was for this show, and I don't know if had they had eight, a lot of those effects, a lot of these fights would have suffered. I mean, it's a brawler anime at the end of the day. You know, it's got its elements, it's got its world building, it's got all these things, the emotional beats, but at the end of the day, much like with Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z, it's about those conflicts. That's what they focused on. But like, as I've grown up over time, I like all of it. I like all of those elements. Like when I was a kid, man, I was like, man, can we get past all this character building bullshit? I want to fight. But now I need a healthy mix of it. Um, at the end of the day though, the fights were fantastic. The costuming was really, really good. Again, it, it's some of those character designs, it's very difficult to kind of bring into the real world. Obviously they are inspired by the, those kind of delinqu that delinquent style that became very popular in Japan with the haircuts and all that kind of stuff with the kind of greaser thing that was going on at the time as very much the style that this focused in on. But even like when it comes to like Hiei with the whole Vegeta hair that he's gotten on, when you think about how that looks on the page versus how would that look in real life, I think they translated that the best they could. I liked what they did with it. At first, when I saw Karama, I was thinking that his costume was a little too over detailed. There was like too much going on, but it grew on me over time. I still do feel like that with, with uh, Hiei that they could have just went with the simplistic robe with the scarf and all that kind of stuff. But overall, I think it was very well done because look at Karasu, look at Tagoro, look at Elder Tagoro. We'll get fucking booey, dude. Again, you win massive points with bringing that character to life like that. And again, Yoko Karama looked fucking great. I feel like all of this show was worth it for that Karama versus Karasu fight. I, 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 that's the highlight of the show for me right now. We closed the portal. There's some other things set up. Obviously the hole was there prior to Sakio going up. And we mentioned Sensui, not by name, but he was alluded to in the first episode. So Sensui has been, at least his existence has been out there. So I'm wondering if he was the one that uh, built this tunnel and then Sakyo came in to use it for his own men's. There was a different kind of trade-off and relationship with the tunnel to the demon world that in, was involved between those two. I think they reordered that, but it, you know, we didn't get to tease. We didn't, did, we didn't get like a, a big old post credit scene that's like, oh, look out for season two. We just got that little joke moment with Elder Tagoro's head being pecked apart by a seagull. I was expecting maybe Sensui or somebody to pop up, but we, we're not doing that, but it has been set up. So I think if this gets a season two, I think that could be done really well. I think that that's a much tighter arc in and of itself. You could do a season two just about Chapter Black, and I think you could do that. You could probably do that successfully in five episodes. That arc alone, is like 30 episodes. How many episodes did it take to complete the Dark Tournament? 66 episodes. We condensed 66 episodes into these five. <laughs> so where One Piece did 45 into eight, this tried 66 into five. I, I, at least at the time of recording this, I don't think it's been said whether or not they're gonna be getting a second season or not. It feels like they didn't hedge their bets. You know, they weren't gonna set up something that they wouldn't be able to deliver on at least. And I do respect that and appreciate that because of that. I, I don't, I, I loathe sometimes because if it's something I want, that sucks when you don't get it. And when it's something laughably bad, like if you didn't enjoy it at all and then they tease, oh, how about our next movie? And you're just like, dude, you're not getting that movie. Like it's, I get that, that temptation, the optimism that what you're putting out there is going to succeed. But at the end of the day, as a fan, if they put something in there and then this never got a second season, that would just, I, I don't like those kinds of endings, you know? There's a lot of potential moving forward if this does well. I don't know how it's gonna do. Overall, 
this is one of the better live action adaptations that I've seen. I've not seen too many that have been in series form. You know, there was the Cowboy Bebop, there was this, and there was One Piece. I think One Piece still has set the bar, and I know people don't, you know, feel the same way. There, people, in, especially when it comes to anime, and it's not just exclusive to anime, it's fandom in general. And you could be sports, it can be sci-fi, it could be comics, it could be whatever. People have their tribes and they will die on those hills. I've seen some opinions on this that I just do not agree with at all. That just, for me, screams blind loyalty to this, a huge bias. But for me, and this is just my opinion, like I think the bar has still been set by One Piece in overall quality of uh, like live action adaptations. Aside from those fights, man, the thing that really held this back though is just the pacing, you know? For me, I need the character beats, I need the emotional moments, I need to feel that weight, that drive, that, you know, momentum. And I never really felt that, like again, because we only had five episodes to go through a lot of this and a lot of that focus and attention was given to the action, a lot of it ended up feeling for me like we were just hitting notes on a checklist. Because of that, we didn't get time to really know a lot of these characters. We were told a lot about these characters. A lot There's a lot of telling, not showing. First episode, I think that was the last time we really kind of focused in with actions rather than words with building up Yusuke. I thought the first episode was a really great, you know, lead into that where we get to see him just standing up for people out of nowhere like there we, there was no other rhyme or reason it was just we got to see the kind of person that yusuke is while everybody else is labeling it as something completely opposite and counter to what we have witnessed which kind of is a great example of how to do that really well which is one of the reasons why early on i was definitely very lax on that but the longer we got through this you know save i would say kuwabara and karama a lot of the characters didn't really have a lot to do outside of how they fit into the action and the set pieces necessarily. Like they all had their goals and they all had their drives, but that wasn't what the show was worried about. You know, by the end of it, they only had hung out a day and now they're friends, you know? It's, it's one of those things that kind of threw around. That whole twit, like 180 with Hie there at the end doesn't really make sense this way when you kind of realize that he only agreed to work with them earlier this morning. By the time that they're leaving, by the time at daybreak, he's like, we're all pals, <laughs> you know? It's it's kind of funny, you know? It's just one of those things where they try to push so much into this little bit. And again, coming back to One Piece, that's where it didn't really have the huge flashy fights. It had like a middle ground between anime kind of fights and a grounded level. Like we had some pretty exaggerated things happen, like with the fight with Mihawk, and then uh, Luffy fighting against uh, Arlong. Like there was some crazy stuff that they did there, but the fights weren't like this. Like they weren't showcases, so to speak. They were there to get the job done in the story and everything else was centered around building out the characters and the world. The emotional element was there through all of them. Five or six of the, <laughs> of the, of the eight episodes always got a tear out of me. It's just like a very counter uh, philosophy happening between the two shows, whereas I just happened to prefer that. And I was never a fan of One Piece until I watched the live action. I had never seen an anime, I've never seen the manga, and I was a long time fan of Yu Yu. Day one, when it first aired in the US, I was on that shit. You know, dropping on Toonami right when I got home from school, Sailor Moon, Yu Yu Hakusho, Gundam Wing, Dragon Ball Z, Dude, coming home after school was always a blast. I love this show. As much as I love that, and maybe that's one of the reasons too why I'm, I I, there, I could see so much potential here. And again, I know I'm gonna get people being like, oh, you're just because you're comparing it to one thing or another. If I, if I remove all of that from my head and try to see this as its own thing, and I did, because there's a lot of changes that they involved in this that I really did like because it fit in with the story that they're telling, like the whole changing up of that sword to this dagger that gave him the Jagan eye for Hiei, completely different. Not at all how that happens. I liked it. It made sense in the story that they are telling here. There's a lot of things that they did that they shifted around and melded together, combining different elements from different arcs to make the story they wanted to tell doable and efficient. And I thought they did that really well. But the thing is, again, because of that pacing, we didn't get time to really kind of feel the stakes, feel the weight, feel the emotions and the connections and the relationships between these characters. I think, again, 
The only strong relationships that I think carry through through the entire run was Keiko and Yusuke and Yusuke and Kuwabara. And a lot of that came from Kuwabara's actor because he was just, he was delivering his heart out, man. <laughs> like, he was one of my favorite things to watch in this show on top of the, obviously, the fights. But, uh, you know, second running up to Kuwabara, I would probably put Keiko or Kurama. Taking my fandom out of the equation completely, I still think this is very flawed just looking at it its own thing. However, it succeeds completely at being entertaining and delivering a lot of great action. Now, if we're talking, including movies into the mix, it's, it's Roroni Kenshin, One Piece, this. <laughs> the Roroni Kenshin films are, I think, the perfect blend of all of that. Well acted. The emotional beats are all there. I think this was really well done overall. Like I said, it is not flawless. It had some issues that I just cannot get past. I don't know if it was the smartest move to go all the way to the Dark Tournament. You know, just the Yukina Retrieval, would that have been interesting enough? I think you probably could have done that in five episodes. Did a season two, built up to the tournament, did the Genkai stuff there. I don't know what the, I don't know what the, the aspirations were. I'm just thinking in, in hindsight and what ifs. But that said, it, by no means was this like a bad adaptation in the grand scheme of things. If we get a second season, I'd definitely be down for it. I'd definitely check it out. But guys, I'd love to know what you all thought. How did you feel about this season? How do you feel about the way they executed the story? What was some of your favorite moments? Sound off the comments. Let me know your thoughts down below. We'll carry in the conversation after the video. Hope you enjoyed the reaction. If it did, leave a like, drop a comment, subscribe if not already. Remember, if you want to see the following three reaction, check it out over on Patreon or if you come remember the channel, get you access as well. And speaking of before we go, I want to shout out our channel legends, Manny Sherrett, Ryan Karen, Yorick Horscott, Melita, Robert Anguiano, Jeffrey Hale, Jake Cottrell, Eric Official, Amy Becca, Casey Wood, JoJo, and Scythe. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. That's it for this video, guys. I'm going to see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.